on July of 1978, famous South Korean actress Cha Eun Hee, also known as Madame Chao, disappeared in Hong Kong. And six months later, whilst looking for her, her ex-husband, the renowned director Shin Sang Ok, also vanished. The South Korean film community and government was shocked, as these were two of its major names. Chao, a famous leading lady, similar to the popularity of the likes of the U.S.'s Elizabeth Taylor, and Shannon Ok, similar in Spielberg, with his ability to make big-budget, critically acclaimed movies. However, it seemed they were gone, and for years the pair were lost, until March of 1986, when they were rushed into South Korea's American embassy, and the two were questioned on where they'd been. They said they'd been in North Korea. North Korea, now infamous for its antagonism with the U.S., was at the time one of Russia's Cold War pawns, a brutal dictatorship from the beginning. North Korea, like other communist dictatorships at the time, created a cult of personality around its then leader, Kim Il-sung, as if they were a god, cutting off the people from the rest of the world with a belief in the system of Juche, the belief of self-proficiency and working without international help. They held up their leader as gods amongst men. Even after losing the Korea War, people were still told to look upon Kim Il-sung as a saviour from evil capitalists. To do this, they used one of the most popular propaganda methods. Film. However, Kim Il-sung considered the propaganda films that his ministry created to be trash, not thinking their quality met his standards, and so having the heads of the creator killed, took his son to the production house to make a speech to their creators. He berated them for their work, until asking the audience if there were any of those who thought they were good enough to leave the studios and take the empty jobs left by those who Kim had killed. To everyone's surprise, Kim Il-sung's son, Kim Jong-il, stood up saying that he would take control of the ministry and create films, and so his proud father, wanting to start his political career, promoted him to cultural arts director. Kim Jong-il, a young man at the time, took his new job very seriously and after watching some of the country's current films, knew they needed to change. So oversaw the new film, the 1973 Sea of Blood, the movie a propaganda opera film about North Korean strength set during Japan's 1930s occupation. The movie came out as a critical and financial success, but Jong noticed the international mockery of the film and believed that it was not up to the standards of the rest of the world. He set looking to break Hollywood's code, to find out what made their films so successful, and more importantly, respected. And so, in attempts to educate himself on the subject, he started the creation of his own film storage and screening building. The building was three stories tall, with at least two separate screening rooms, and the rooms full of rolls of foreign films. Each pirated, brought back by spies, and translated by foreign defectors into Korean. However, these movies were all banned by the government of the people, with only Jong allowed to watch these movies. So when translated, the movies were scrambled, so they could not be enjoyed. However, this still didn't work, as translators would recognize movies like Mary Poppins. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. However, even after watching all these movies, and creating movies, Jong when comparing these films to New Hollywood and French New Wave, realized they still weren't holding up. So he decided to kidnap Choi Yi Hun and Shin Sang Ok. The ex-couple were the creators of some of Jong's favorite movies, but whose Jong thought film had suffered after their separation. North Korea had been kidnapping people from Japan since the 60s urban legends of spies pretending to be police, taking people from beaches and then taking them to North Korea to teach them Japanese. So they kidnapped Choi Yi Hun first to then draw in Shin Sang Ok. Good having Choi first. She was taken and then lived in a villa surrounded by guards for five years, only coming out when she was shown off at parties by Kim Ilson and didn't know her ex husband was in North Korea until they both met five years into their capture at a party brought on by Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Shin Sang-ok had had a much harder time than Jin, as he had been kept in prison camp, starved and beaten after trying to escape one too many times.
살아야 되니까 그 교육은 받는 척 하면서 매일 탈출에 대한 계획을 세웠어요. 영화 감독이라는 사람들이 참 무모한 게 항상 당신이 봤던 영화, 만들었던 영화를 자꾸 현실을 착각하는 경우가 있어요. 스티브 맥킨 나오는 무슨 뭐 탈출자라든가 뭐 이런 영화를 막 당신께서 짜증기를 해가지고 뭐 북한을 탈출하려고 하는 거예요. 5 days before the party, he was taken out, plumped up, and made presentable. Soon both Chow and Shin were told by Kim Jong-il that he brought them together to imitate their heyday and create new, better North Korean films. Then he sent them to live together in their own villa, to be called upon when he needed them to make films. There they got a chance to talk together alone and compare news. They decided to buy a tape recorder, a luxury not allowed for normal civilians, to record what they heard. This for two reasons. First, in order to prove if they ever got out, they had not gone to North Korea by their own free will, and also in case if they didn't get that chance, there may be something to show their loved ones and say where they had been. Soon they were called upon by Kim Il Sung, who showed them his film collection and explained why he had brought them over. A conversation recorded by Chow and Shin. Wanting films that promoted the Korean lifestyle, Kim complained that North Korean films were boring and bad, saying, "We are in kindergarten and the world is in college." Uh, purse, and she flicked it on, and I think unexpectedly, Kim Jong Il just talked at them mostly for two hours. You know, Kim Jong Il spoke very, very fast, and his mind sort of went all over the place. And he had a very intimidating waiter slash bodyguard who kept walking in to to refill drinks and empty ashtrays. He blamed this on laziness from the people having the misguided idea that they had it easy. Had no motivation to work hard, 
saying that he told people what to do, and they turned in their subpar versions of his request, and received their rations. The lack of quality was more likely by the fact that the only book on film was The Art of Cinema, a book written by Kim himself, and their constant threat of death. Most filmmakers would rather turn in a bad work than attempt artistic expression and risk insulting the state. Kim and Shin made a deal, starting the production on films, starting the Shin Studios, which was the first government organization under the communist rule to be named a private citizen, something that Shin insisted on and Kim, so desperate for films, agreed to. And when the first North Korean Shin film was made, it was a massive success, not only due to it being a better film that had been seen in North Korea in a long time, but also it was showed outside of North Korea. In his desperation for films, Kim had allowed Shin and Chao to film in Eastern Europe, something he had banned his own filmmakers to do. And images of European streets with nice cars and nice houses shocked North Koreans, who up until then had been told they were the luckiest people in the world, and the rest of the world was carnage. But this shows otherwise. Shin continued directing 12 movies, including a documentary, Son of a Nation, about Kim Il-sung, in three years, constantly working. Continuously pushing what he was allowed to do, filming around the world, the movie Love, Love, My Love, a rom-com which the first movie in North Korea to express love for something other than the Kim Dynasty. Chao and Shin making movies tirelessly until March of 1986, filming in South Korea, when driving from their hotel, they managed to get in a different taxi to their bodyguards, and rushed to the American Embassy, where they were received sanctuary. They had only the clothes on their back and the tape recording which they had carried around with them in the case of such an event. However, it should be said it is impossible to fact check anything with the North Korean government, as they remain highly secretive, and the recordings of Kim Il sung never explicitly alludes to kidnapping Chao and Shin. One of the most interesting points above the story is how Shin has talked about he didn't entirely dislike his time in North Korea. When originally taken to see Kim Il sung Chao and Shin that were told that if recognized and asked why they were in North Korea, they should say freedom, and for Shin, there was some truth in that. When Shin was captured by the North Koreans back in 1978, the South Korean government was also somewhat of a dictatorship. After the Korean and Second World War, South Korea had been a puppet ruled by the United States. Even though South Korea had officially become an independent country in 1948, after the Korean War, an agreement was made with the US military and South Korean government, the US was allowed to have military bases throughout Korea. This has created laws and standards that being anti-American was illegal, and thought of a Soviet and communist limiting free speech. This created mass censorship in South Korea. Shin had been suffering in the country himself before the Korea was in ruins, but the government had shutting down his production studio after he had been too much trouble for censorship rules. So while South Korea had protesting and killing in its streets against the USA, Jin was given what few directors are, and granted relative creative freedom. Saying in his and Chow's joint biography that he associated North Korea with cinematic freedom. Times where he was asked to blow up a train model, he was given a real one packed with explosives. Another way he asked for wind machines, he was given helicopters. The marriage between Shin and Chow was regardless of the suggestion of Kim Il-sung, but remained after their escape, with Jin remaining proud of his work in North Korea until his death on April 11, 2006. Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.